In this video, I'll be showing you how to pair up the edge pieces on your 6x6 as well as tackle the 3x3 stage on the cube. The next step in the reduction method after solving all of our center pieces is to pair up all of our edge pieces. And we'll be doing this using the free slice method in this tutorial. So that means solving the first eight edges using one slice as kind of a buffer to store pieces. And then once you've solved in each individual edge, we store them in both the top layer, so four up here, and in the bottom layer, four on the bottom layer like that. This is exactly the same approach that I taught in the 5x5 tutorial. The only difference is that this time we'll need to solve four edge pieces. So connect four edge pieces together as opposed to just three edge pieces on the 5x5. Again, let me stress that if you're not familiar with freestyle edge pairing on the 5x5, then I suggest watching that tutorial and learning that technique first because it might be difficult to follow along on the 6x6. On the 6x6, it's going to be a little bit harder because there are more pieces to search for and there's more possibility because there are four pieces in each edge that pieces will be on both the top layer and the bottom layer. So there will be more rotations involved to look for pieces. There are just two types of edge pieces on the 5x5. There are the inner wings, so that is these two in the center, and then the outer wings, which are these two edge pieces. When we start out solving our edge pieces, it's useful to start with something that's already partially solved. And so if we look around the cube here, I see that these two inner wings are paired up with this outer wing, even though it's incorrect. And the final outer wing is over here. So what I can do is insert this one to this position, replace that one, then flip this block of three edges with our standard flipping algorithm and then slice it back. And now we've solved our first edge and what I'm going to do is actually just store it on this top layer. So it's stored back here and remembering I'm using this slice for my free slice edge pairing. So the next thing that I see are this yellow and green edge and this yellow and green edge. So again, it's useful to start with something that's already partially solved when you're choosing which edge to solve next. So I see these two and it, these two are outer wings and an inner wing which has green and yellow on it is up here. So I can insert it with R U prime R prime and then slice those two layers across to form these three. And then I need to find my final green and yellow edge. So it's not in the top layer here. So I'll need to flip the cube over and it's in fact right here on this bottom layer here. So what I'm going to do is insert it with F R prime F prime R to this position. So if I did R U prime R prime, then it would be in the same layer as this already solved edge. So I need to do F R prime F prime R and then slice to pair it up. When you're starting out solving the six by six, I recommend that you store four edges on one layer first. So store all four edges on one layer and then you can flip the cube over and not have to worry about it anymore. So given that we've previously stored this edge on this layer back here, what I want to do is store the next one on this red face as well. So I can just store it like that. So now we need to make a decision about which edges to solve next. And I see this white and orange one and this white and orange one here. However, they both have the same sticker facing towards us. So if I was to do a slice move, these two aren't solved correctly. So I need to flip this one first and then slice it across. And now I've paired these two up and I need to look for the last two orange and white edges. I see one here. So this is an outer wing. So I can insert it, match it up with those. And then I need to look for the final inner orange and white edge piece. And it is back here. So it's already in my free slice layer. So I didn't need to actually flip the cube over, but sometimes it just helps to search for that piece. So it's over here. So I can just slice it like that. And now I can store my third edge in this top layer. And next up, uh, I'm going to choose the red and white because I see these two inner red and white wings are already paired up. There's another red and white piece here. What I'm gonna do is slice it over. And I see that in fact, again, we have this case where the two colors, so the colors on the front of this piece and these two pieces are the same. So I'll need to flip either this edge or this edge. So I'll just flip this 
and then slice it across to create uh, a group of three edges and then look for the final white and red edge and it's over here. So I can do f r prime f prime r to insert it into this layer and then slice across and then what I'm going to do is replace this with an unsolved edge and now I've stored four edges on this red face. So I can flip the cube over completely and start solving the next four edges, just continuing to use the free slice method. So next I see that these two green and whites are correctly solved relative to one another and I can insert this next green and white piece here and then slice it across to create this group of three and the final green and white piece, the outer wing, is up here. So I can insert it and then slice it across there. Now the decision of what to solve next is a little bit tricky. Um, I do see that I have these two which are connected to one another but they're not correct with respect to one another. So either this piece will need to go down here or this piece will need to go to this position. Um, and I also see that I've got this inner wing, the blue and white inner wing over here. And if I do a slice move like that, then these two get paired up together and I can either flip this piece, so this edge or this edge to be able to pair up this inner wing with these two. So I'll just flip this like so. And now I've got this group of three and the final blue and white one is up here. Now I can actually use my left face to insert it to this position and then slice across and now I've solved these pieces. So now that our blue and white edge is solved, we need to look for what to solve next, I suppose. And I see that these red and uh, red and yellows are back here and they're both solved. So yellow, yellow, red, red, and another red and yellow piece is over here. So I can insert it, slice, and now I've got these three pieces and I need to look for the final red and yellow wing uh, inner wing piece and it's over here. Now remember that we need it to be in this layer here. So the third layer from the top and at the moment it's in the fourth layer from the top. So what I need to do is actually flip this piece like that and now when we slice across it will get solved. So we've almost finished our first eight edges. What I'm going to do is just take that one out and I just need to solve one more edge here. And I see these red and blue inner wings paired up together already. This red and blue one is up here. So I can insert it, insert it like that then do a slice move. And now I've got this group of three and the final red and blue one is actually back here. So already in the correct layer. So all I need to do is slice and solve it. And then what I'm going to do is restore my centers around this axis. So resolve my center pieces. The final four edges get a little bit more complicated than they were on the 5x5, five five, but we can take a simple step-by-step -step approach and we can solve them fairly easily as you can see now. So the approach that I'm going to take, I'm going to teach you, is to firstly solve these inner wings. So solve these pieces correctly and then we'll deal with the outer wings after that. So we're only going to be look, looking at these inner wings and essentially it's just going to be like solving the last four edges on a four by four around one particular slice. So we're going to be doing a lot of flipping moves, uh, flip flipping algorithms to help us do this. So to start out, for example, ignoring these outer wings, I see this green and orange inner wing and this green and orange inner wing. So what I'm going to do here is just slice, flip this one, and slice back. And now I've solved these two green and orange pieces in the inner wings there. Next up, I need to look at these ones, these ones, and these ones. Um, I see that these yellow and orange pieces, so this one here and this one here can be solved in the same way. So I'll just slice, flip, and slice back. And now I have just two more um, inner wings which I need to solve. So Probably what I'll do is do an R2 move to put these solved ones at the back along with these ones. And now what I need to do is get these two directly opposite one another as well as these two. So this blue and orange one and this blue and orange one as well as this red and green one and this red and green one. So what I'm going to do is firstly flip this edge in place such that now when I slice I replace this one. So it's just like the final two edges on the 4x4. I just slice, flip, and slice back. And now I've solved all of my inner wings. 
like this around this middle layer. So after we've solved those inner wings, solving the inner wings with the outer wings is just like solving the last four edges on a 5x5. So pretending that these inner wings are just the middle edge on the 5x5 and these outer wings are the wings on the 5x5, we can solve them yeah, just like a 5x5. So for example here, we have this situation where the middle edge and the outer wing are solved incorrectly with respect to one another. So we can just use our flipping algorithm. So replacing it with the correct piece like that, flipping it in place and then slicing back. And now we've solved the first of our final four edges completely. Next up, we'll look around and see what else we can do to solve the pieces. Um, I see that I've got this block of three, so the inner wings and this outer wing and the other outer wing here, so the green and orange one, is up here. So what I'll do here is slice, flip this one in place, and then slice back to completely solve this edge. Finally, I just need to solve these edges, so the blue and orange and the red and greens, and I have a case where I can uh, just flip this one. So th this, this middle edge is flipped with respect to the wing. So what I'll do is flip this in place so it lines up with this one. And then slice this across, flip it in place, and slice back. So to go over that again, to solve the last four edges on your 6x6, six six, you're going to firstly solve the inner two wings like a 4x4, four four, and then solve the inner pieces with the outer wings like a 5x5. Five five. And if you didn't quite follow the second stage, particularly of solving these last four edges, then I do recommend that you go ahead and watch the 5x5 five five last four edges tutorials. Like on the 5x5, five five, we can also encounter edge parity on the 6x6 six six where we get to our final edge and these two wings, these two outer wings, need to be swapped with one another. And to solve this edge parity, we essentially apply the same algorithm that we did to solve the 5x5 five five edge parity. So it's just R U2, R U2, R U2, R prime U2, L U2. And then the only change that we make is for this move, we do a 4 R prime and then u2, r, u2, r prime, u2, r prime, like that. So you'll have six by six edge parity in half of your solves and that's the algorithm, algorithm that you'll need to use to tackle that parity case. After that, you just need to go ahead and solve the six by six as if it were a three by three because all of our edge pieces and centers are paired up together. So let's just go ahead and solve our cross pieces, these two, this one here, and this one and I can go ahead and solve our F2L pairs. So I've got this pair, which I can insert into the back there, and then these two. Then I'll go for this corner and this edge, and then this corner and this edge. Then I've got OLL, and I've got PLL. And this is an opportune moment to specify that on a six by six, like on a four by four, we can also have OLL parity. So if I just set it up like this, I didn't get OLL parity in that solve, but like on a four by four, because the six by six has an even number of layers, we can also encounter this OLL parity where we get to our last layer and we have one edge misoriented or one, yeah, one group of four edges misoriented as if it were a three by three, uh, three by three cube with only three last layer edges oriented. And we essentially use the exact same algorithm for OLL parity that we do on the four by four, except we just use three layers instead. So turning half of the cube for each, for each turn. So it's just RU2, 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 R prime U2, LU2, R prime U2, RU2, R prime U2, R prime, with all the R and L moves being wide turns. In addition to edge parity and OLL parity, we can also have PLL parity, whereby we have a PLL state which isn't possible on a regular 3x3 cube. And so I'm going to introduce a slightly different PLL parity algorithm, which is a little bit more, bit more finger friendly for 6x6, uh, for the 6x6 cube, which goes like this. So if you do have a PLL case which isn't possible on a 3x3, that means you have PLL parity and the algorithm goes like this. So it's just R2, F2, U2, uh, R2 and then wide R2, and then U2, F2, R2 wide. 
So sometimes you will have edge parity, OLL parity, and PLL parity in a 6x6 solve, and that can be a little bit cumbersome, uh, but that's just yeah, something you'll have to deal with. And then finally, for this solve, we can just finish off uh, our PLL. We have a Y permutation like this.